Out of all different stellar objects and planetary objects we've discovered out there in the universe, one of the most unusual objects that still is kind of mysterious even today is an object we usually refer to as a brown dwarf. And it looks like we've just discovered something even stranger in the brown dwarf family, what the scientists refer to as the accident, or a white type subdwarf. Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be discussing this unusual and mysterious object and what it might actually have on the inside or what it might represent. Although to be honest, even now the scientists are not entirely clear. It's still a big mystery. Anyway, there's this famous citizen science project that's been running for a few years, the one known as the Backyard Worlds Planet 9, that's already discovered quite a lot of incredible things out there. And it just so happens that, once again, an amateur astronomer was able to find something unusual. By looking at various data from WISE, also known as the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, one of the members of the project identified something strange at a distance of about 50 light years away from planet Earth. Something really faint, but something moving relatively fast, 200 km per second, slightly faster than a lot of other objects in the region. And because it was a somewhat strange discovery, and also because it was discovered completely by accident, since then this unusual detection has been referred to as the accident with the more official name being WISE 1534-1043. And although it initially appeared as some sort of a fast-moving brown dwarf-like object, with further investigation, even more mysteries unraveled as the scientists looked at the data. But first, well, the brown dwarfs themselves are already quite mysterious. Since we don't have any brown dwarfs in the solar system, and since the nearest one is actually still quite far away from us, it's only in the last few years that we started to discover some of their properties and understand what actually happens inside of them. So generally speaking, when it comes to different objects in different star systems, we find quite a lot of different red dwarfs. We also obviously find quite a lot of typical stars like our sun. And we find quite a lot of different Jupiter-like gas giants. But right in between a red dwarf and a gas giant, there is this very mysterious category of different objects that we refer to as brown dwarfs. Here is an example of very well-known brown dwarfs, the binary system known as Loman 16, and some of the other binary systems we've located in the last few years. With pretty much all of the discovered brown dwarfs, visible as individual red dots with the Milky Way in the background. But the size or mass itself does not actually tell us anything about the brown dwarfs or their individual differences. As a matter of fact, this sort of an image is a little bit misleading. Mostly because we know that different types of brown dwarfs are almost entirely different from one another. And so even though the official definition of a brown dwarf is essentially an object with a mass between 13 to maybe 80 masses of Jupiter, there's already been some exceptions found to this rule and at the same time it doesn't tell us exactly what a brown dwarf is, or more importantly how it was created. With some of them being part of another star system where they're essentially just really large objects, with others being individual objects, what you would call a rogue planet, created in a similar way to a typical star. On top of this, depending on the mass, they actually may have different reactions on the inside. So for example, theoretically it's believed that approximately 13 masses of Jupiter is required to start the reaction of deuterium, specifically deuterium fusion. And that's when the heavier isotopes of hydrogen start to essentially fuse, producing energy. But because there's much less deuterium inside the typical object than regular hydrogen, it obviously does not produce a lot of energy. Nevertheless, it's believed that once an object reaches a temperature of about 3 million degrees Celsius on the inside, it officially becomes a brown dwarf and essentially starts the deuterium fusion, producing energy and producing a little bit more heat than a typical planet. But heavier brown dwarfs start to burn other things, including things like lithium, and so their properties most likely change quite dramatically. We're still not entirely sure how, but they definitely change. And because of this, there's quite a lot of variety in all of the brown dwarfs discovered so far. For example, we have some really hot ones with temperatures almost at the limit of being a star, and at the same time we have some really really cold ones with temperatures somewhat similar to what you would find on planet Earth, with some of them even being colder. But unlike stars, they're not going to go through the same process of evolution. As a matter of fact, they're expected to slowly cool down over time and simply turn into much colder versions of brown dwarfs. And so the older the brown dwarf, the colder it's most likely going to be. 
Now, in the last few years, quite a lot of things have been discovered about brown dwarfs, including their rotation speed, which is a lot higher than even Jupiter, including the fact that they seem to have stripes and storms on the surface, and also that they seem to be not really brown, but more orangey or red in color, with the coldest ones being even darker, purplish, or even maroon, and also that they seem to possess a lot of different layers. So there's some similarity to objects like Jupiter, but there are also some differences, quite a lot of differences. And so, for example, this study I discussed last year was able to discover a lot of patterns on the surface and even measure the speed of wind by measuring a lot of different radio emissions. Here, the speed was about 650 meters per second, which is roughly five times faster than the wind speeds on Jupiter. And then, only a few months ago, even more massive brown dwarfs were discovered. This paper, by the way, is in the description below with some brown dwarfs really pushing the limit of that definition. At least one brown dwarf was discovered to have a mass of 98 masses of Jupiter, definitely breaking this particular definition you see here. And so we still don't really understand exactly how they work and what exactly causes a brown dwarf to one day become a star, especially some of these massive ones. And on the opposite side of definition, we have the accident, the brown dwarf that also doesn't seem to fit into anything. As a matter of fact, by comparing the colors coming from this brown dwarf and by analyzing various properties such as temperature, while also comparing this to some of the other brown dwarfs, they realize that this object really doesn't fit into any box. It really seems to be in its own category completely by itself. It seems to fit into category of brown dwarfs known as Y brown dwarfs, so the coldest ones, but at the same time it seems to have completely different colors and emissions from all of the other ones we know so far. Also, unlike a typical brown dwarf that's at least somewhat visible in some of the spectra of light, all of these white type brown dwarfs are almost entirely invisible. They're only visible in the infrared light. And so detecting and studying them is actually extremely challenging. But on top of this, this particular brown dwarf, because of this analysis, also seems to suggest that the brown dwarf is made of some really unexpected stuff, or at least has some really unusual properties. All of this analysis is based on comparing the colors and color magnitude to some of the colors of other brown dwarfs known to us. And that's comparing it to all of the other white type dwarfs, the cold ones. So this one really stands out. And at the moment, the explanation is just not there. There are four possibilities, with one being most likely, but it's not definitive yet. So the most likely explanation here is that this is maybe a low metallicity and an extremely ancient cold brown dwarf, or possibly even some sort of a sub dwarf. At the same time, it could be a low mass, low gravity brown dwarf, or maybe just an ejected exoplanet, or some sort of a super cold stellar remnant, such as maybe some sort of an exotic white dwarf. But the best explanation is still the one that suggests that this is just an ancient and very low in metallicity brown dwarf that very likely traveled from somewhere on the outskirts, from farthest reaches of our galaxy, where essentially a lot of these low metallicity objects are usually formed. And this could also be one of the first, if not the first, brown dwarfs formed in the entire galaxy, very likely originating somewhere on the outskirts in the halo. And that's because a lot of modern brown dwarfs, a lot of the brown dwarfs we've detected so far, have already been created from a much richer in metals material. Material that has a lot of non-hydrogen and non-helium elements on the inside. But this brown dwarf, at least according to the study, seems to mostly contain hydrogen and helium. And being much older and much cooler, its outer layers very likely became extremely transparent, allowing us to sort of peer through the outer layer and kind of see the inside of the brown dwarf itself. Which is how the scientists explain the fact that it seems to have different colors compared to a lot of its cousins. And if this is actually correct, it would mean that this is probably one of the biggest discoveries in terms of brown dwarfs in the last few decades. It might actually allow us to peer through and see what happens inside of these objects for the first time ever, allowing us to learn and understand how these objects form how they evolve, and what happens to them at the end of their lifetime. But the alternative explanation that also might make some sense is that maybe it's an entirely new type of an object, with the proposition here being that it's some sort of a Y-type subdwarf. So basically something that's actually between brown dwarfs and planets, creating an entirely new category right here in between these two objects. Which also means that it would be a pretty interesting and pretty important discovery, and something that needs to be studied in a lot more detail. Either way, we're definitely going to be coming back and talking more about this object once scientists discover something else about it. 
For now, that's all I wanted to mention. You can find all of the relevant links and all of the relevant studies in the description below. So thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.